Public Radio Theater brings you Lana Turner and John Hodiak in Honky Tonk. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. If you refer to the American thesaurus of slang, you will find that the title Honky Tonk means, among other things, a lawless frontier town. But in tonight's story, you get more than the tale of a lawless frontier town. You get a saga of a growing west, a story of strong wills and a strong love. Starring from Metro Golden Mayor Studios, two players you've often requested, Lana Turner and John Hodiak. If you've ever visited the western ghost town, a relic of the days when fate depended on a roll of dice, you will have been impressed, as I was, by the inconveniences and deprivations they endured. In the Bonanza days, a bolt of calico delivered across the high theaters to Virginia City cost from $70 to $90, while a cake of laundry soap to wash it with cost upwards of $2 and a half. It's time for our curtain and act one of Honky Tonk, starring Lana Turner as Elizabeth and John Hodiak as Candy Johnson. <laughs> Nevada in the late 1880s. A crowded train bound for the gold fields has paused momentarily to take on water and fuel. Now, as it gathers speed, two men dash down the track, followed by a mob of irate citizens. With agility reflecting years of practice, the men leap aboard the observation car, bow politely to their pursuers, and enter the train. It's awful close, Candy. Yeah. I can still smell them car and feathers. Yeah. That would be scary. Uh, you and that bag of peppermint. I'm complaining we're still alive, ain't we? I'm getting awful sick of being run out of town just for a little crooked card playing. Me too, sniper. You want to know something? I'm going to find me a town of my own. I'm going to be the gent who says go and stay. Just watch me. Candy, you ain't turning on it. I'm turning smart. Don't you ever want to do anything better than play come on for the suckers? Uh, speaking of suckers... Look, huh? Enter the car. Poker, that's your speed. Couldn't be persuaded? No, I got some thinking to do. Got any idea where this train's going? Oh, uh, Yellow Creek, probably. That gold strike's still going strong there. Yellow Creek, huh? Sounds appealing, Sniper. Yeah. So does the rattle of them poker chips up there. I'll find me a seat in the next car. See you later. I beg your pardon, miss. You dropped your handkerchief. Oh. Mmm. Smells kind of good for such an old trick. You think I dropped it on purpose? Well, of course not, honey. Well, that's the last thing you'd do. The last thing I'd do is speak to a strange man. Oh, no, no. Don't overdo it, honey. Overdo what? The wide-eyed business. Now, let's see. You come from a little town in Vermont, Ohio, or uh, maybe New Jersey? Massachusetts. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And your father's a school teacher, poor but honest. My father happens to be a judge, and he's very honest. An honest judge was everyone who wasn't. But uh, somehow or other, the poor little daughter is thrown out into the cold world. And where does she go? Why, to the Golden West, of course. But she needs about $10 to pay for a ticket. Mm -hmm, you're very discerning. And it just happens I've got a $10 bill for you, honey. It just happens I could use it. Oh, Mrs. Morgan. Mrs. Morgan. Yes, miss. Here's another donation for the Salvation Army. Oh, bless you, miss. Oh, don't thank me. It's that uh, gentleman there. Oh, bless you, sir. Uh, oh, why, uh, that's quite all right. I hope you're satisfied. Honey, that was right cute. You know, there's just one point you left out of your pretty little story about me. They always warn young ladies about men who have clean hands. Huh? Clean hands. In a country where the honest man works. Now get out of here before I call the conductor. Well, I'll be dark. <laughs> Darling, I hardly even knew you had been so long. Been so long, my dear. Well, now tell me all about Boston and your trip. And... Howdy. Uh, are you speaking to me? You remember me, Candy Johnson? I'm afraid I don't, sir. Sure you do. How'd you leave Dodge City? Now, see here, young man. Oh, don't be angry, Papa. Just another clumsy attempt by Mr. Uh, Johnson to get acquainted. This is my father, Judge Cotton. Did you say Judge Cotton? An honest judge. Yeah, well, like I said, was there ever one who wasn't? I'm sorry, Judge. Guess I made a mistake. Come along, Elizabeth. Oh, uh, where could a stranger get a good 
steaks around here. The Plaza Saloon has the best beef in town. Thank you, Judge. Elizabeth, that fellow, did he bother you, dear? No, Papa, not half as much as I bothered him. This is the place he recommended, Sniper, the Plaza Saloon. Candy, look. Huh? The suckers in this joint are thicker than flies at a butcher and bait. Take it easy. Yes, the more I look around, the more I think that maybe this is a town. What town? A town I ain't going to get run out of. If that's the case, I'll put up a monument. Go, Zach. If it ain't the candy, man. Peppermint? Have a take the bit, have you? Give me a kiss and find out. Oh, don't ever change candy. You working here? Why not? You interested in taking out a clean candy? Sure, but it's got nothing to do with digging. Gold dust. Oh, hello, Brazo. The table's cool enough. Get to work. The boss? Yes. What's that badge he's got pinned on? He's also the law around here. Sheriff. Oh. Well, make yourself at home, candy man. Same as before, Judge. Another bourbon? Just, uh, just leave the bottle. Say, uh, you haven't seen a newcomer around here who... Looks like me. Oh, candy. <laughs> How are you? I trust that little farce at the depot didn't disturb you. Of course I recognize you. Of course you did. My boy, I'm going to put you next to a good team. Well, that's the place I like to be. I, uh, I worked up a nice little rig here, Candy. Justice of the peace. Pillar of respectability. Collect fines right and left. How would you like to cut in on it? Why are you so ready to share a good thing like that? Yeah. Yeah. Man's a fool to try and con you, Candy. <laughs> You're out on a limb, huh? There's a group of nosy citizens here who want to know where the money has gone that I've collected in fines. That well, sounds like time for you to flag your shirt tail out of town. Uh, it's past time. Uh, that girl at the depot, my daughter, she insisted on joining me here. I, I can't go. I'm licked. How much do you need? About a thousand dollars. Have you got it, Candy? No, but I will have. Uh, where did you get it? Never mind. Hey, sniper. I tell you, there's no way to speak. Call me, Candy. Well, Look, you never told me before, spoken. understand? Just stand by and keep the fly by. I have too many. Uh... Seems to me if a customer is worried about the scarcity of aces, Mr. Brazos, the only thing the house can do is spread the deck for him. Easy, son. Easy, easy. 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 He's talking for a lot of us. Well, now, why do you want to pull a gun on me, Mr. Brazos? Because that's the best way to handle troublemakers. I don't want any trouble. Come here. See this cigar? All right, light me. I said light me. I couldn't do that. That takes too many hands. I keep mine where they can do the most good. Then start using them. Hey, uh, mister. Pop the gun right out of his hand. All right, everybody. I don't know this dude here, but I'm going to see that this remains a private fight. So simmer down. Thanks, stranger, but it ain't a private fight. I'm talking for every man who comes in here for a sociable game of cards. <laughs> Mr. Brazos, I'm going to borrow that other gun you're wearing. I ought to shoot you with it, but I'm going to let you do it yourself. We're going to play a little game called Committing Suicide. What's the rule? There are six shells in your gun. I'm throwing five of them on the floor. The remaining cartridge I put back into one of the empty chambers, and I spin the cylinder. Now, gentlemen, let the hammer fall where it may. What are you talking about? It may fire the first time the trigger's pulled. It may fire the last. You don't know, and I don't know. But we're going to find out the exciting way. Now, here's your gun. Aim it at your head and pull the trigger. You're crazy, Brazos. Yeah, all gamblers are crazy. You got five chances out of six. That's as good a bet as a gambler ever had. Aim it at my head and shoot. Yeah. And I go first, huh? All right. I will. Well, your turn, mister. Would you mind my asking why you're doing this? Because I believe in giving everybody better than a square roll. All right. I'll try. Your turn again, Brazos. The odds are getting short. You've got three chances out of four now. I make it two out of three now. For you. That's right, two out of three. Maybe you're lucky tonight, Brazos. Let's see, huh? No, we've both pulled blanks so far. It's an even money bet now. There's just two chances left. And you go first. Wait. Wait a minute. Take the gun. Take it. Okay. But I'm not aiming at myself this time, mister. I'm aiming at you. I wouldn't do that. You might end up in front of a pack of indignant citizens waving a rope. <laughs> That's the best deal you've got to offer? No. No, you can throw in your hand if you want it. Only it'll cost you $5,000 to do it. You crazy? It's up to you. Either we see our game through or 5000 to quit. Blackie. Who's Blackie? Cashier. Yeah, boss. Give it to me. $5,000. i will take uh, that, Blackie. Thanks. Oh, uh, 
Let me have that gun, Brazos. I'm curious to see what would have happened if you'd pulled the trigger. Mind if I aim at your chandelier? Go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> Just goes to show you. Think of the money you could have saved, Brazos. Come on, Jack. <laughs> Hey, boy, you're wonderful. <laughs> Walking away with $5,000 on Crook's bag roll. Just like old times, huh, Jack? Oh, I forgot that gun. Uh, what are you doing with that gun? Pardon me while I blow out my brain. Candy, no, 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 no. Oh, it was empty. The gun was empty all the time. <laughs> sure, it was empty. I distinctly saw you put a cartridge back in that gun. No, Judge, you just thought you did. Candy, that's the best trick I've ever seen you pull. You'll get that $1,000 tomorrow, Judge, when you can see to put it back where it belongs. Well, why tomorrow? Because some people would say that right now you're pretty close to being drunk. Well, who wouldn't be? Trouble I've been in. Well, here's my boarding house. You sure picked a nice, respectable atmosphere. What's that sign say? The Reverend Gene Varner, rooms for less. Reverend, huh? That's you, Judge. Oh, good evening, Mr. Varner. Rolling in again, huh? Tighter than a mink. Please, madam, my... Evening, Reverend. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't my handle. The late Reverend was Mrs. Barnard's husband. And I only wish I was big enough to fill his shoes. Well, you look capable enough to fill almost anybody's shoes, man. Oh, uh, get on in, Judge. Papa, is that you? Oh, this... Am I deepest apologies, my dear? It's all right, Miss Cotton. I'll help the judge to his bunk. It's obvious you've been quite helpful already. Come on, Papa. Oh, uh, take your time tucking him in. I won't move a muscle till you get back. Sorry, mister. But Elizabeth and me are saying good night now. Okay. We in church. We ain't got a church in Yellow Creek. Now, vamoose. You haven't got a church? Well, huh. could you use a church if you had one? I ain't no preacher. I couldn't run a church. And how about a mission, maybe, huh? Well, it'd be a decent place for folks to go to on Sundays, anyway. Sure it would. Now, here. Here's $1,500. You can have your mission in no time. You joking, mister. I never joke with money in my hand. Well, you don't look to me like a man who'd help the Lord again, the devil. You can't always tell by looking, sweetheart. You build a decent place for them to go to on Sunday, and I'll build one for weekdays. What's that? A saloon where they can get good whiskey and honest gambling. A place where every sucker will get a square deal. Good night, Mrs. Varner. Oh, uh, you might tell Elizabeth I'll be sitting on the porch. Maybe I'll tell her, and maybe I won't. But if you ain't gone in five minutes, I'll be down there with a shotgun. Thanks for your donation. Well, I've got Pop in bed, Mrs. Varner. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Oh, forget it, child. That uh, big spellbinder is waiting for you on the porch. Oh, he is, is he? Now, whoa, honey. I kind of like that fella. Reminds me of a piece of fried pork. A streak of fat, a streak of lean, a streak of good, and a streak of mean. Well, personally, I'm a vegetarian. Still, you uh, could go down and kind of... Oh, you bet I'm going down. And for once, somebody else is going to do the talking. Don't look so disappointed, honey. I'm still here. You're on the wrong side of town, Mr. Johnson. Oh, I think the two sides can get together. Well, I don't. Now, stay away from me and stay away from my father. Well, I thought the judge kind of liked me. My father sees good in everyone. Why, he wouldn't recognize a weasel that had stripes down his back. <laughs> That's a skunk, honey. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I've made myself clear. I hope you understand me now as well as I understand you. But you don't understand me, honey. The truth is we're really the same kind of people. I'll kiss you and prove it. You do what? Still any doubts about it? Why, I've never been treated like this in my entire life. Oh, well, now I stop to... pretending you didn't like it. Come on, let's try it again, huh? Just for that, I'll kiss you twice. <sighs> now, get out of here. Get out. Okay, honey. You know, this looks like the beginning of a long and beautiful relationship. Good night. Oh. Well, did you tell him all good, Elizabeth? He kissed me. He what? Three times. Why didn't you stop him after the first one? I... Well, I don't know why. Thinks he can fool around with my borders, does he? Just because he gave me enough money to build a mission. Oh, good night, Mrs. Varner. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of Honky Tonk. Starring Lana Turner and John Hodiak. At first glance, the history of congressional meeting places looks like the road game schedule for a Major League Baseball team. 
The first and second Continental Congresses met in Philadelphia in 1774 and 75, but from then on, it was anyone's guess where Congress would meet from year to year. In just 10 years, from 1775 to 1785, Congress convened 10 times in eight different cities. Among them, Lancaster and York, Pennsylvania, Trenton and Princeton, New Jersey, and Annapolis, Maryland, as well as the more likely Philadelphia, Baltimore, and New York. The Capitol was permanently established in 1800 on the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. Prior to this final move, the last 10 years found Congress meeting in Philadelphia. In the past 167 years, Congress has never changed its city of convention. The congressional meeting place, once a veritable hopscotch of the eastern states, is now a symbol of the permanency of the institution itself. We return you now to William Keeley. Our curtain rises on Act Two of Hunky Tonk, starring Lana Turner as Elizabeth and John Hodiak as Candy Johnson. In the weeks that went by, two new buildings arose in Yellow Creek, both built with Candy Johnson's money. One is the Square Deal Saloon, and the other, Mrs. Varner's Mission. At the mission's first service, one of the main speakers is Candy Johnson. Yeah, folks, I'm here to give you the lowdown on the orneriest citizen west of the Mississippi. No, no, I'm not referring to Sheriff Brazos. I'm talking about John Barleycorn. I used to like whiskey myself. I'd keep on pouring it down until I went plain loco. Now, if you'd like my home remedy to keep from taking a drink, well, here it is. A bag of candy. Outside of a woman's lips, the sweetest thing on earth. Steadies the hand and clears the eye. How come you're talking against liquor? You sell it, don't you? Yes, friend. Yes. I found out long ago you can't keep some men from drinking. That's why I opened up the Square Deal Saloon. The only place where you can be sure that they cut the cards and not the liquor. But one honest saloon and one mission in Yellow Creek ain't enough. What you ought to have is a school for your kids and a city hall. And a mayor and alderman. Decent, honest folks will see to it that Yellow Creek becomes the finest town in the entire state. You're surprised I'm letting you walk home with me, aren't you, Mr. Johnson? I'm knocked off my feet, honey. Mm -hmm. You're uh, finally starting to like me, huh? Oh, well, I didn't say that. But I did like what you said just now in the mission. I, um, uh, I'm almost sure I may have been misjudging you. Have, uh, you got any idea, Miss Cotton, what a gal like you can do to a gent like me? No, but I'd like to find out. Well, I've seen women I'd look at quicker, but never one I'd look at longer. Oh, like that woman who works for you, Goldust? Goldust is all right, but we're talking about you. You're just a runner. I could put you in my vest pocket and lose you in the small change. Me? Well, I've always gone for women that could stand up and slug it out with me toe to toe. You, honey, you slug me just by looking at me. <laughs> I'm a runt, and I slug you. I've never been complimented in quite those terms before. And your eyes are green, and that means hard to get along with. Oh, that's not true. Why, I have a wonderful disposition. Maybe so, but you've got brains. And that ain't womanly. I haven't a brain in my head, Mr. Johnson. And you've got a full set of Boston principles that are just about as easy on a man as a hair shirt. So why don't you tell me something? Yes? Why do I keep coming back for more? <laughs> well, you've told me why. And very sweetly. Well, then, why don't we just... Uh, you're going to put your arm around me, aren't you? I sure am, honey. I'm sorry, but you're not. Here's the boarding house, and I'm going in alone. I never saw a gal so willing to let it go at talk. A man's got to stop talking sometime. Oh, but not until he said some very important things. Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. Now, wait a minute. There's no sense. Oh, and thanks for the walk. Boston. I bet she even went to Harvard. Now look, Judge, we're doing all right, aren't we? We've cleaned up these last six months. I'm not complaining about that. It's what you're going to do that worries me. The elections, or is it Elizabeth again? The elections. You're not satisfied with just a saloon anymore. You think of anyone better to run things here? Brazos, maybe? Brazos. Hmm. You've even got him working for you now. He saw the light. I think you do too, Judge. Now, what's wrong in putting all our friends into office? Oh, all right, Candy. What can I do? I need a few more good men around here. Run over to Granite and round up Kendall and Adams. 
What can I promise them? Tell them no matter what they're making, it's chicken feed to what the take will be in Yellow Creek. Don't worry, Candy. They'll come. Hello, hello, Jack. Hello, Golda. I've been listening, Candy. Well, you're all set to take over every outfit in town, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, all except one. If you don't take that one over, it's going to take you. I never thought a woman would bother you that much, Candy Man. Why are you sure it's a woman? Because I'm one of the species myself. <laughs> um, Candy, you mind if I take off for a little while? I've got some business to take care of. Oh, go ahead, honey. Just don't be too long. I'd miss you. Yeah, sure you would. Just like you missed a seven-year itch. Well, come on in, Golda. We're just fixing up some biscuits, Elizabeth and me. Oh, just passing by, Miss Barner. I uh, wanted to leave off a little donation for the mission. Well, that's wonderful, Golda. I'm sure obliged. Uh, Elizabeth, you know Miss Elkins, don't you? Oh, come in, Miss Elkins. Oh, uh, Shogun, huh? <laughs> well, I'm trying to. Oh, I can't get used to this altitude. It takes everything three times as long. That's only true of cooking, honey. Now, uh, speaking of Candy Johnson. Were we? Well, we would be sooner or later. Yes, sir, that man's some salesman. The only trouble is he's selling just one thing. Candy Johnson. I'll say this for him, though. He don't hand out any guarantees. <laughs> Why, how can you say that? He has a big sign right over his door. The square deal. He's got a different sign over his heart. You want to know what that one says? I can't wait. Honey, it says, I'm not the kind of gent that stays put. Someday I'm going to point myself at the door and ride on going. Believe me, sister, I know. What are you trying to say, Goldust? Something you should have had sense enough to know. Candy Johnson isn't the marrying type. Oh, and you've come to tell me that because you're jealous. You're getting warm, honey. You uh, really don't think Candy's got a wedding ring all picked out, do you? Why, what else would he be picking out? Hmm? Excuse to get you out of town with him? Frisco, maybe, or Sacramento. I see. And you're warning me. Something like that? He's uh, seeing you tonight, isn't he? I hope so. Yeah. Well, I'll get along now. Oh, say, could I have a drink first? Being a rat's awful thirsty work. Whoa there. Whoa. Well, honey, what more could you ask for? Mountains and moonlight. Sure is romantic, huh? Mm -hmm. Candy, there's something on your mind, isn't there? Plenty. Every time I look at you, honey, it socks me right between the eyes. Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking, too, about courtship. Why, back home, they're never shorter than a year. I ain't got that much time, honey, not nearly. Now, look, you and me, we're going to hustle back into town. We're going to do some fast packing, and we're catching the 10 o'clock to Sacramento. And uh, when you're packing that bag, don't put any wrong ideas into it. Such as? Well, I'm a citizen like this. I like to know that every door works both ways. When I walk in, i got to know that I can walk out. You do wear a sign over your heart, don't you? What? Candy, you know very well I'm not going to Sacramento. Well, now, now, wait a minute. We won't be there alone. Your father's going to meet us there. My father's in Granite. You sent him. Sure, I did. And then he's going to Sacramento. What's the matter? Nothing. Well, if we're going, we haven't much time, have we? That's right. Get up there. Honey, you're going to knock him dead. First off, I'm going to hire a whole floor at the Sierra Palace Hotel, and then we'll buy out the town. I've been aching to see you dressed like you ought to be. Plenty of plumes and diamonds. A whole handful of diamonds in your hair. Diamonds in my hair. Yes, Candy, what more could a girl ask for? I got the train tickets, honey. Ready to leave? Already. Oh, but we've plenty of time. Sit down for a while. Where's Mrs. Varner? This is her prayer meeting now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Candy, hmm? I want a drink of toast. You take a drink? Well, why not? This is an occasion, isn't no, it? No, wait a minute. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot you can't drink. I can, but I don't. Oh, and I did so want to drink to the diamonds and the plumes. Oh, come on, Candy. I've always heard it isn't polite to let anyone drink alone. <laughs> sure, I'll drink. Go ahead, Philip. <laughs> now, you're just not trying to impress me, are you? You know, like a little boy walking on his hands. Here's to Boston, honey. Oh, no, no. To Yellow Creek. To the gents from Yellow Creek and the diamonds and the plumes. Well, you did get it down, didn't you? What are you doing? Filling your glass. Yeah. No, no, I don't think I should. Give it to me. This one's to the Sierra Palace Hotel. And a red silk dress. Candy, what's your real name? I guess I know you well enough to tell you. 
well. But you don't know me well enough to laugh. Well, I won't laugh. Let me have that bottle. It needs courage to tell you this. All right. It's Jedariah. Jedariah Johnson. I know you well enough to smile. <laughs> well, drink up, Jedariah. What to this time? To uh, knocking them dead in Sacramento. That's the best one yet, honey. And that's your third drink. Now, give me that bottle. You've had enough, I think. I'm thinking for both of us from now on. Yes, Candy. And I'm thinking one more drink is just what I need. Just one more drink. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Oh. Don't you think it's time you woke up? Oh. How do we get to Sacramento, honey? Oh, we didn't. Uh, this is Mrs. Bonner's spare room. We brought the two of you up here last night. The two of me? Well, you and the bottle, you wouldn't give it up. Oh. Well, what else happened? Well, don't you remember? Oh, you were very happy. So happy you wouldn't stop singing. Oh. Did I sing good? Well, the sentiment was beautiful. All you sang was... Here comes the bride. Here comes... Hey. Wait a minute. That thing you're wearing on your finger. That. It's a wedding ring, Candy. Where'd you get it? Well, you gave it to me. Oh, and the minister in Evansburg was very cross with you. We were in Evansburg last night? Yes, Candy. We were married in Evansburg last night. Of all the ornery tricks... Oh. Well... Good morning, Mrs. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Now, look, maybe I got conned into this marriage, and maybe I didn't, but anyway, we're married, so come here. Oh, oh well, I, I, I'll go down and fix some breakfast for you. Well, you're not nervous, are you? You know, it's too bad we didn't have one of them long Boston courtships. In three or four years, you'd have been cool as a cucumber. Now, you listen to me. We are going to have one of those long Boston courtships. The only difference is it's starting after the wedding. I'm going to have respect from you, Candy. That ain't why you married me, honey. And you're going to change. You didn't go to all that trouble just to reform me, did you? Maybe I did. All right. I'll reform during the day. And it may keep me busy until 9 o'clock tonight. But I'll be back at 9, and you'd better be here. Morning, Candy. Well, I just got off the train. Everything's fixed. Kendall and Adams will be on tap tomorrow. That's fine, Judge. Sit down and have a drink. Well, uh, well, I really ought to be getting right home to Elizabeth. I've been thinking things over, and I... Well, I'm sending her back to Boston, Candy. I don't think she'll go. I'll insist on it. This is no place for her. Come on, here, have a drink. Um, this is the first time you ever pressed a drink on me. Why? Judge, Elizabeth and me were married last night. Married? You married Elizabeth? That's right. I could kill you for that candy. I could kill you, except I... I couldn't even shoot a dog. I'm going to hate you as long as I live. He told me... He told me you married him, Elizabeth. Darling, you knew I loved him, didn't you? That's why I wanted to get you back to Boston. Elizabeth, I'm going to tell you something I should have told you long ago. Candy Johnson is a liar and a thief. Oh, please, Papa, don't. Maybe there is something wrong with Candy, but he'll change. I know he will. And I'm no better than he is. I'm a cheap crook with a respectable front. I was born that way and I'll die that way. And so will Candy. We'll never do anything but hurt you. We'll never change except for the worse. Papa, no, no, that's not so. No, oh, it's no use, dear. It's just no use. I was home at 9 o'clock sharp. I've been arguing with my wife for 40 minutes. Already? All she wants to know is whether I have decent, honorable emotions or not. Why didn't you just kiss her, Candyman? How could I? She had that door locked. And you didn't break it down? Sure, I broke it down. I stayed just long enough to tell her good night. Now, if you'd like to come to my wedding supper, I'm inviting you right now. Rides at home, cladding out her pretty green eyes. Well, then, let's see. Hey, Sniper. Yes, Candy? Bring us a couple of steaks and a bottle of beer for the ladies. Now, stop 
lying to me, Sniper. Honest, Mrs. Jackson. Uh, Candy ain't here. Why, he ain't been back all evening. The man at the bar said he was in his office. Is that his office? Well, yeah, but... That's uh, all I yeah. wanted to know. Go away. Get away from that door. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to break it down. Oh, hello, Gold Dust. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. The two of us are having a little wedding supper, honey. Sit down. Mm-hmm. I certainly will. Order me a steak, too. Well, are you sure you'd like our steaks out here? We eat them rare, honey. That ain't Boston style. My grandfather used to eat them raw, on the hook. Oh, sure. Probably put the horns in one hand and the tail in the other and ate the critter like an ear of corn. What about your ancestors? They didn't eat beef, honey. They just rustled. Family troubles already? Oh, only with the relations on my husband's side. Oh, well, Candy isn't a relation of mine. He's just a friend. An old friend. <laughs> she hardly knows anything about you, dear. If I told all I knew, sister, he'd be in jail. And so would you, sweetheart. Well, the missus doesn't object, Candy. I think I'll leave this wedding party. Before I go to another, I'll get me a husband first. Thanks for the beef thing. All right. What did you come down here for? To tell you what I thought of you. Oh, but I can't. I can't. Oh, Candy, it isn't my fault if I can't slug it out with you toe to toe. I didn't want to be born in Boston. It just happens. And I can't help it if I have green in my eyes. I'm just as good looking as she is, and I, I have just as good a figure. Maybe even better. And I can walk like she does if that's what you want. What else can you do? Well, I... I haven't had much practice, but... But I can kiss a man. Oh, Candy, I... I want to go home. I've got my arms around you, honey. You are home. Lana Turner and John Hodiak will return in a moment with Act Three of Honky Tonk. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Uh, after our curtain, you're invited backstage for a visit with tonight's stars. Here's the final act of Honky Tonk, starring Lana Turner as Elizabeth and John Hodiak as Candy Johnson. <laughs> Tricked by Elizabeth into marriage, Candy Johnson's discovered that the girl from Boston is nothing short of an ideal wife, and matrimony, the perfect existence. Yes, for two years now, all things have flourished for Candy. Yellow Creek is a booming town, and he's ruling it with a crafty, greedy hand. Come in, Brazos. What's on your mind? Them storekeepers again. They say they can't pay the rent we get and stay in business, too. Tell them to shut up and raise the price of beans. Or can't you handle a tough assignment like that? I think I can swing it, Candy. Anything else? Yeah, we've got every roulette wheel and poker table in town on a 15% kick-in. Well? I sit at 20. What do I get out of the heist? The same as before. Any objections? Plenty. But where'll they get me? Nowhere. So I ain't kicking. Not yet. So long, Candy. Sniper, close up the office. I'm going home. Uh, boss, what about Breezehood? You need rats in this business sometimes. The citizens are getting awful mad at you. I'm going home. Uh, that big dinner's on tonight, huh? Yeah. I'm entertaining the biggest politicians in this state, plus four millionaires. The, uh, judge gonna be there? He's Elizabeth's father, ain't he? Judge is doing an awful lot of talking these days. If there's anybody else, you'd have shut him up months ago. I'll have a little chat with him. Better do it quick, Candy. He's out to get you. And what's eating him, anyway? His own son-in-law. <laughs> That's what's eating him. I'll talk to him tonight. Finished dressing, honey? Uh-huh. There, do I look all right? Only the prettiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Black lace stockings and diamonds in my hair. That's what I promised you, and that's what you got. Everything but the plumes. Oh, think of it, darling. You and I are about to entertain the most important men in the state. 
Aren't you nervous? I'm shaking all over. Soothe me, honey. <laughs> oh, Candy. <laughs> Candy, darling, I love you so. Never stop saying that, baby. Never. <laughs> oh, uh, your father downstairs? Oh, he said he had to go out. He left us before you came home. He'll be back, won't he? Well, I'm sure he will. Why? Hmm? Oh, uh, nothing, sugar. Nothing important. Well, Mr. Johnson, now that the ladies have left us, perhaps we can get down to business, eh? Yes, Johnson, what about that mining stock deal? Well, gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you that... Good evening, gentlemen. Come on in, Judge. I'm sorry I'm late, but I can still have a little drink with the gang, huh, can't you? Gentlemen, my father-in-law, Judge Cotton, retired. Well, yes, a retired judge and a practicing drunkard. Now, how about a little drink? Excellent. A toast to Candy Johnson, Nevada's man of the hour. Yes, to the man who arrived in Yellow Creek with one shirt and a million words. Now the people have all the words, and he's got every shirt in town. You can do better than that, Judge. Yes, I can. I'll drink to your guest. A room full of suckers. Suckers? You know what a sucker is, don't you? A sucker is any fool who listens to Candy Johnson. Good night, gentlemen. Well, what do you know about that? All right, I do run this town. That's why you came here. You're ready to pay for anything that I can do for you, and I can do plenty. So we ought to get along fine. Now, does anybody see a difference? I'd like to repeat my toast to Candy Johnson, Nevada's Man of the Hour. Candy Johnson! Well, darling, tell me, did I behave all right? Was the dinner a success? Honey, I got those big boys just where I want them. All of them. <sighs> what a relief. You weren't worried. Well, I've been worried about a lot of things, Candy. For instance? Amy, for instance, about you. About your never wanting to feel married. I don't want to feel married. Well, I, I wish you would. He'd want you to. Who'd want me to? Uh, your son or your daughter, as the case may be. I'm a spring tail dinger. Oh, Candy. Candy, you've been having a baby. It doesn't make you feel too married. What do you think? Well, I was scared, Candy. I was scared to death you'd start looking for a door. What door? From now on, this house hasn't got any doors. Am I intruding? Oh, Papa, darling, where have you been? I just wanted to tell you, Elizabeth, that I'm leaving this house tonight. I'm moving into town. Papa. Come on now, Judge. You've got to start acting like a grandfather. What? Elizabeth, I tried to believe you didn't know what was going on. What's making all the honest, respectable citizens of Yellow Creek talk about taking the law into their own hands? Forget it, Judge. Just a lot of suckers talking to more suckers. You were going to change him. Instead, he's changed you. Wait a minute. What's wrong with her wearing dresses like this? What's wrong with her living in a house like this? What's wrong with her being happy? If you cared about anything but yourself, you'd know. The only chance for real happiness is to get away from you. Anything I like, Judge, I don't let get away from me. I wish. You were dead. You're acting like a bunch of school kids now. Shut up. All right, Brazos. Now, what's this you're trying to tell me about the judge? We've kept quiet for more than a month while he's been shooting off his mouth. He's out to get us, Candy, and the boys here don't like we it. We should have put him out of his misery weeks ago. we got to do something, Candy. This Reform League in town is holding a meeting tomorrow night. They're demanding a grand jury investigation. That's right, Candy. The judge has promised him all kinds of facts and figures. The judge will leave town tomorrow morning on the 10 o'clock train for good. Now get out of my office. Oh. Brazos. Yeah? I figure the boys got the idea that you were sending the judge out of town. I'm doing it. Understand? Oh, sure, Candy. They was worried you might be a little sentimental about the judge. Me? I wasn't worried at all. You sure you understand everything, Judge? I understand perfectly. I'll tell Elizabeth you got a sudden itch to be on the move again. Drop her a line, and when you need more dough, let me know. Where'll you be? Right here in Yellow Creek. Hanging from what tree? <laughs> After the baby's born, I'll have Elizabeth pay you a nice long visit. So long, Judge. Well, folks, you all heard what our reform committee's got to report. 
The thing is, what do we do about it? I'm forgetting a rope right now. Let's stretch the neck. Candy Johnson and his whole gang. Yeah. That never settled anything. Wait till we hear from Judge Cotton. Why ain't he here now? I don't know why, but he will be. No, I'm afraid he won't. <laughs> the judge sends his regrets, folks, and asks that I take over. I understand you got a squat coming. Yes, and a loud one. When the judge starts talking, the grand jury will hear it a mile away. The judge is through talking, but I'm not. I don't like to blow my own horn, folks, but it seems to me as though I have to remind you of a few things. Don't let him get wound up or you'll have us nodding like train seals. I can prove that 40 cents out of every tax dollar goes to public improvement. And we can prove that 60 cents goes to you. Mr. Wells, I don't like talk like that. I'm going to ask you to trot out the proof right now or pull in your horn. Don't worry, folks. I'll give you all the proof you need. I've changed my mind, Candy. I got off that train and I'm seeing this thing through. Here's the whole rotten story. I'll begin with Sheriff Brazos, the man who just shot me. Brazos and Candy Johnson here made a deal with... A deal with... Uh, they were shot up. Sniper, where's my wife? Where's Elizabeth? Candy, haven't you heard? Sure, I heard. I was there when Brazos killed him. I've got to find Elizabeth. Oh, I, I meant, haven't you heard about Elizabeth? What are you trying to tell me? Well, she was in her carriage when they carried the old man out. She she saw him, Candy, and she fainted. She fell from the carriage. She, she's hurt real bad. Where is she? Where? Well, the doc and Goldust, they took her to Goldust's house. So it's the nearest place, Candy. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Candy. Candy. Candy, where are you? I'm here, honey. Right here. Oh, it's my fault Papa's dead. He was only trying to help me. He didn't understand that I... I couldn't leave you no matter what you did. I should leave you, but I... I never would have. I had any idea that Brazos would... Someday... Someday I'll be like you. I'll lie and cheat and steal too. It's the drug, Mr. Johnson. She doesn't know what she's saying. Doc, she's going to be all right. She is, isn't she? She'll be all right. With the baby, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. Candy. Sniper says he's got to see you. Think the busted loose, Candy. We're in trouble. Not now. The whole town's on the warpath. Brazos and the boys are holed up in the city hall. They got guns and barricades. You better listen to him, Candy. The judge getting himself killed like that touched off the works. He said her only chance was to get away from me. Believed it so much, he got himself killed for it. Let's believe him. Coldust? Yeah. This envelope, give it to Elizabeth. Inside it tells where everything is. There's enough cash to last her a hundred years in Boston. You're picking a fine time to walk out. I should have walked long ago. Not unless you're no good for her, like the judge said. I got a different reason. I'm not for her. Her speed is somebody working in a store selling groceries. That's for her, and I just found it out. She's asked me for you again, Mr. Johnson. Tell her I... No. Never mind, I'll go in. <laughs> about, honey. Nothing at all. But did, did the doctor tell you, Candy? Sure. He said you're going to be fine. But the baby, I, I lost your baby. I didn't think you wanted one and then you know, you were so happy. Now, when you get well, honey, you're going to have everything you ought to have. A nice, clean world, all dressed up in a white shirt with its face washed. I like the one I have. No, you just kind of got used to it. You'd better get some sleep now. No, I, I want to stay awake and think about my husband. Please, honey. All right, I'll, I'll go to sleep then and dream about him. How about a kiss? That's got to do me for a long time. Ten days. Oh, it's just that any time away from you is a long time. Oh, where are you going? Let's go, Sniper.
That's us they're yelling for, boys. They're sure anxious to have our blood. Hey, never bust in here. You sure built the city hall solid. Wait a minute. How come they let you through just now? They offered me a deal. They're giving me ten minutes to get out of town with my hands up and my pockets empty. If I was you, I'd take it. You only wish you were me. They got a rope for you, Brazos, for killing a judge. But I am you, Candy. I just now changed places with you. I'm boss now, see? I get that high horse you've been riding, and you get a little hunk of lead. But first, me and the boys want to see you do some crawling. Light my cigar. Come on, light me. I told you once, I don't carry matches. Here's a fistful of matches. Light me. Looks like I don't have much choice in the matter. All right, Brazos. And for the last time, you slug anybody, Johnson. Well, boys, I guess Brazos won't hang after all. Uh, All right, Candy, drop your gun. Stop it! How you settle with Brazos is your own business. What goes on now is ours. We don't give in to that town out there. The town gives in to us. How do you stand? Now, how do you think I stand? I'm through talking to them suckers out there, and I'm through running. Now, get on those windows, boys, and start shooting. When we polish off a town full of citizens, we'll be famous. But this won't be the real fight. That's going to start when the militia gets here. What militia? I got a telegram just before I came here. That's why I was late. The governor's heard about our little feud, and he's sending down the militia. You going to fight it out with them, too? You bet I am. Oh, no. They'll come charging up here with their cannons, and we'll have some nice, shiny brass buttons to aim at. What are you worried about? We're all duly elected officers of the town government. We ain't breaking the law. It's that mob out there rioting. I got this town in my pocket. I'm hanging on to it. Now, who wants the honor of firing the first shot? Your town. I ain't fighting the militia to fill your pockets. He's right. The troops will massacre us. Maybe they will, but what a fight we're going to put up. Nobody will ever say we ran out the back way. I ain't too proud to go out the back way. Me neither. How about it, boys? Uh, Hey, come back here. uh, Come back, you yellow dog. (laughs) Looks like we've been deserted, Candy. Yeah. Like me, sniper. You're getting more like Brazos every minute. Except he's dead and I ain't. You're dead in Yellow Creek. You just give the town back to the suckers. <laughs> that was the best con speech I ever heard. Come on, Sniper. Let's go meet our public. Johnson. And the city hall's all yours. Move right in, folks. It's vacant. What about that gang of cutthroats? They're pouring out of the back door right now. And Brazos. Brazos is dead. Now, if you'll excuse us, Sniper and me, we got some urgent business to attend to. Out of town. Start running, Johnson. All right, suckers. One side, please. Here we go. Running for a train again. Relax, Sniper. Here. Have a peppermint. <laughs> I know we've been living in your hotel a month, and if it's the bill you're worrying about, I got an idea. Will you please let me say something? Now, the bill comes to $100. Now, here's a deck of cards. High man wins. Pick a card, double the bill or nothing. But I'm not talking about the bill. Huh? You ain't. A lady just came in. She said she wanted to see you. Young lady? Sniper. Honey. Oh, I couldn't be any more gladder to see you if you was a big, fat sucker from Iowa. Oh, I've never told you this, Sniper, but I think you're beautiful. Uh, he don't know I sent for you, honey, and he's going to take my head off when he finds it out, but meantime, it's uh, room 206. First turn to the left. I'd like to say goodbye twice to the same person. I didn't come all the way here to have you say goodbye to me again. You know I'm no good for you. No, no good at all. Only all I have to live for. You mean that? You think I can change? <laughs> you changed long ago when you ran away from me. A man like you running away from a runt from Boston. Every time I look at you, honey, you still slug me right between the eyes. Which I'm very apt to do. If you don't kiss me. A fine married couple we are, without even a home. Home? Mm-hmm. With your arms around me, Candy, I am home.
Good night, and thanks for being with us. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs>